Welcome to an Ocean Scene tutorial for Blender. In this video you will learn how to set up and texture the ocean modifier, how to make objects interact with the waves of the modifier, how to make simple boat sails using cloth physics, and learn how to set up the lighting and compositing for scene at night. Timestamps for each section of the video as well as a link for the Blender source file are in the description. First, add the ocean modifier to a plane. The only values you need to change here are the repetitions, the resolution and the time. The repetitions basically act like an array modifier, they control the amount of duplicates of your original mesh. The resolution controls the amount of subdivisions and therefore the amount of detail of the ocean. Higher values can slow Blender's performance very quickly, so leave your viewport resolution at 7 and set the rendered resolution to something like 20, depending on your computer's performance. With the time value you can animate your ocean. Simply set a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of your time scale using values so the waves look natural. Now the waves start slow, get faster over time and slow down at the end. This is because the default handle type of Blender is automatic, meaning the keyframes are smoothed out. To fix this, select both keyframes in the timeline, press V and choose Vector. Now the animation has the same speed the whole time. Now we want to create a texture for the ocean. As you can see in these images, wavy water always looks brighter near the top of the wave and darker farther away. To recreate this in Blender, we can use a separate XYZ node. As the name suggests, this node splits the coordinates of a vector into its individual components. Simply plug the generated slot of a texture coordinate into the vector and use the Z socket of the separate XYZ node to drive a color ramp separated into dark and light blue tones. Now for the foam, simply create another principal PCF shader, leave it white and mix the two nodes. Now we could use a noise texture to mix the two shaders and create some kind of foam effect, but as a much easier and much better looking way. In the ocean modifier we have a tab called foam. Simply enable it and enter a name for the data layer. The name is case sensitive, so pay attention to that. Now that the ocean modifier has generated the foam, we just need to use it. Add an attribute node and enter the name you've just given your foam. Then use the factor in the mix shader node and you've got yourself an ocean with foam. To control the amount of foam, simply adjust the coverage amount in the modifier. If you would like to add the blue shining effect as seen in the intro video, add a color ramp with two shades of blue and plug it into the emission socket of the foam principal BCF shader. To control where the emission should be and how powerful it should be, add a noise texture and a color ramp. Adjust the scale and detail until it fits what you're looking for. To increase the strength of the emission, add a math node and change it to multiply. I use the value of 30, simply adjust it so it fits your scene. To animate the movement of the texture, change the dimensions of the noise texture to 4D and set a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of the timescale. Now model a simple boat. To animate it, we could keyframe the boat's location and rotation so that it looks as if it was interacting with the ocean, but again, there's a much easier way. If your boat has several objects, parent them all to the hull. Add a plane, subdivide it a bunch of times, add a shrink wrap modifier to it and target the ocean. In edit mode, select all the faces and assign them to a new vertex group. For the hull of your boat, add a copy location and a copy rotation constraint. Target the plane with the shrink wrap modifier and select the vertex group we just created. Now the boat interacts with the ocean the same way the plane does. You can now easily keyframe the position of the plane and the boat will follow across the waves. Finally, hide the visibility of the plane in the render. When playing the animation, the boat still looks very static, it doesn't look as if it was being affected by the wind. So add some sails, subdivide them a bunch of times and add a cloth modifier. In edit mode, select the outer vertices and add them to a new vertex group. In the shape tab, use this group in the pin group to fix these vertices in place. This will prevent the sails from simply flying away. Now add a wind force field and increase the strength until the effect is noticeable. For variation, increase the noise of the wind or change the strength using keyframes. Now switch to the cycles render engine and enable denoise in both the viewport and render tabs. For lighting, we are going to use an HDRI and a point light to get some nice reflections on the water. Now place your camera. In order to make the scene look believable and immersive, place your camera low as if it too was on a boat. If the ocean is abruptly stopping in the distance, you can duplicate it, decrease the resolution and scale it up to act as a background. When you've rendered the image, switch to the compositor. Check Use Nodes and press Ctrl Shift left click on the render layer and you will get a view node to see your final result. First we're going to add in a glare node, set to fog low with high quality. Depending on the brightness of your emission objects, you will need to play around with the mix and the threshold to get the desired result. For color and brightness adjustments, you can use the RGB curves node. Then add a lens distortion node. Enable jitter for some artificial noise. This will break up the perfection of the render and make it look more like the image of a real camera. 
Then you can use a very small value for the dispersion. I use 0.0175 to get some chromatic aberration, another effect caused by imperfect camera lenses. Check fit to undo any distortions to image. If done very sparingly, this can give your render a very beautiful look. If you would like to have the source file for the final result, it's the first link in the description. If you've got any questions, feedback or requests for tutorials, feel free to let me know in the comments. That's it, thank you for your attention, I hope you learned something.